hello everyone. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me uh, to share our recent study on functional cure of HIV infection by PD-1 vaccine based immunotherapy. But before I give my talk, I really want to thank the meeting organizers for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And uh, this first slide, everybody probably knows after over 39 years of efforts, currently we still do not have a effective vaccine. At the same time, we still do not have a therapeutic cure. But in recent years, with a tremendous progress made, especially in the end of the discovery of uh, uh, neutralization antibodies, and we are putting more efforts try to achieve a new goal, which is called the HIV functional cure. Basically, to achieve prolonged undetectable viremia in the absence of the antiretroviral treatment. At the same time, we have to uh, prevent disease progression and prevent the CD4 loss and also eliminate HIV transmission. And also there's no latency activation during the process. So based on the guideline uh, introduced by International AIDS Society, which was published in the Nature Medicine a few years ago. And we know that HIV cure is possible, uh, is possible because we already know the first cured person, uh, Timothy Brown, and then recently we also heard of the success of the London patient. And basically how to achieve functional cure relies on multiple innovations. One of the very interesting area, uh, also the new uh, strategy actually is uh, the invention of therapeutic vaccine or immune-based therapy, which is actually what we also try to achieve. And if we look at the HIV infected people, this is the recent experiment we did by screening the HIV GAC specific T cells among either treated or untreated patients. And we can clearly see that uh, after patients receiving the antiviral treatment, they do not really have good memory uh, T cell response. This is probably why after we stop the antiretroviral treatment, uh, patients viral low will rebound very, very quickly. So because they lost uh, the long-term T cell memory. Therefore, using the vaccine-based strategy to boost host T cell immunity is a very crucial, cr critical for uh, treating the AIDS patient for prolonged viremia control. So this is our uh, research hypothesis. Basically, we want to come up with a, a vaccine strategy to induce uh, both broadly reactive uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, basically it's the CDA T cell. At the same time, we also try to induce broadly neutralization antibodies. Those are the major two arms of the host adaptive immunity, uh, which are the target of our research. So then in recent years, we know that in the cancer immunotherapy, there is a major breakthrough. It's, a, it's the technique called the immune checkpoint uh, blocker. And uh, by using the knowledge, we actually noticed that one of the immune checkpoints called the PD-1, pd ligand interaction on the antigen presenting cells. And uh, by taking advantage of this uh, particular uh, uh, structure, we actually using the PD-1 as a, a molecular targeting strategy to deliver HIV antigen specifically to antigen presenting cells. And uh, in 2013, we published the first paper indicating if we deliver HIV antigens through this particular interaction, actually we can induce very potent cytotoxic T lymphocytes. And uh, the dendritic cell targeting vaccine strategy actually was uh, uh, pioneered by Professor Ralph Steinman, but in recent years where well, by testing this particular PD-1 and the PD-L ligand interaction, we were able to invent this new vaccine strategy we call the PD-1 vaccine. So then uh, by, uh, by doing uh, additional experiments, uh, the one we published was on 
uh, in the mice. But uh, recently, we also did monkey studies, try to evaluate uh, the efficacy of PD-1 based vaccine. And uh, this piece of work has not been published, but using this opportunity, I share the two studies we performed. Basically, the difference between these two studies is the uh, vaccination regimen, the times, and also the frequency, a little bit different. And uh, this is in uh, a shift challenge model. Uh, in this particular model, we use R5 tropic uh, Chinese rhesus macaque adapted shift SF162 P3 strain for infection. At the same time, we evaluate the vaccine in induced T cell immunity and see whether those are the key uh, immune correlates of, for protection in this study. So after the animal uh, were vaccinated through the two study regimens I just introduced, basically we were able to induce very broadly reactive TCL immunity as uh, uh, sh showing on top, you see each of the bar indicating a particular T cell epitope. And you can see after the vaccination, this case using the SIV GAC P27 as the test antigen, you can see there's a multiple epitopes uh, were able to induce the specific T cell uh, responses. And uh, using a different assay uh, down here, showing here, you can see there's a, a multiple epitopes uh, quite reactive uh, and uh, as expected based on our PD-1 vaccine design. And the majority of the T cell responses are actually are CD8 T cell responses, which are very important for eliminating the, the virus infected cells. At the same time, we also measure the polyfunctionality uh, of the T cells, which are specific to the P27 antigen. As uh, we're showing here, especially the CD8 T cell population, you can see the specific reactive T cells, they are secreting both TNF alpha and also interferon gamma. And uh, since they are releasing both cytokines at the same time, we call this type of the T cell immune response are polyfunctional, uh, which are more uh, uh, needed for the protective effect. And as you can see, the mainly T cell, CD8 T cell responses uh, in terms of the frequency actually is higher than that of the CD4 T cell immune responses based on the, uh, the PD-1 vaccine design in, the in this monkey study. And then after we did the viral challenge uh, for two groups, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the su significant viral suppression were achieved by two uh, 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 studies. Uh, and you can see the uh, majority of the vaccinated animal actually had undetectable viremia after uh, a few uh, months of time. But as you can see, control unvaccinated animals, they actually maintain higher viremia and eventually uh, many of the uh, animals actually died of the simian AIDS during the process. So suggesting the vaccine induced in immunity is indeed showing the protective effect. And then uh, this is uh, by evaluating the longer period of time, basically uh, the study was carried out for more than uh, uh, three years now. And uh, over time, you can see the overall survival. Uh, you can using this figure down here showing that all vaccinated animals, they did not die from the simian AIDS. But you can see a majority, over 60% of the control animals died of the AIDS. So suggesting the vaccine induced the immunity can achieve actually prolonged of the protection among the experimental uh, monkeys in this study. And then after the viral infection, we also me measure the T cell immune responses uh, during the process, as we can see, actually, during the uh, uh, infection uh, time, actually, a lot of uh, recalled CD8 T cell responses were shown, which actually may play a major role in uh, containing the viral replication. So this is actually consistent to what we pre pre previously published, indicating the PD-1 vaccine can induce a very good memory response then upon real viral infection, those CD8 memory T cell were activated 
for such a dramatic uh, uh, CD T cell response. So as indicated in this uh, slide. And you can see, we can also see some CD4 T cells, but uh, the amount of the response is still mainly the CD8 T cell response in consistency to our vaccine original design. So then, in order to understand the protective mechanism, we further conducted uh, anti-CDA anti uh, antibody uh, response. Basically, we're using the anti-CDA beta antibody to deplete the CDA T cells. And as you can see here, as soon as we inject the anti-CDA T cell uh, antibodies, you can see after the CDA T cell was depleted in vivo, the, you, there's an immediate viral rebound indicating during the process, indeed the viremia was actually contributed by uh, control uh, through the, uh, the reactive CDA T cell responses in those monkeys. And then we wait for, uh, after over 100 weeks, basically uh, a very long time, then we want to see whether our vaccine can be used to boost the pre-existing memory CDA T cell response. At the same time, we're also curious during the process of the vaccination, uh, whether we can also activate the viral replication. And as you can see here, after the boost vaccination, we see good record CDA T cell responses again as expected, but at the same time, we do not see viral activation. So there's still no measurable uh, viremia and indicating the vaccine is uh, rather safe in terms of you know, periodic uh, boosting of the host immunity for prolonged control of uh, uh, viral replication. So which is uh, exactly what we want to achieve for the functional cure of HIV infection. So in conclusion for this presentation, we can, uh, I shared with you actually our vaccine, a highly immunogenic, and we were able to induce broadly reactive uh, uh, T cell immunity, especially for the GAC specific using the test antigen I showed, shared with you. And the majority of the CDA T cells are polyfunctional. Actually, the effector memory uh, CDA T cells are the dominant population studied. And I also showed you our vaccine can be repeatedly used to boost the, the the host T cell long-term immunity. And uh, uh, because this is a DNA vaccine, we actually, during the uh, vaccination procedure, we use the electroporation device. And this device recently has been approved by the China FDA for clinical application. So therefore, we really hope to bring this therapy for the patient study. Therefore, for this purpose, recently, we designed the human PD-1 vaccine basically using the human soluble PD-1 molecule infusion with the gag mazak sequence based on hundreds of the Chinese real virus sequences. So in this design, and recently we did a pilot monkey study, we want to see whether the HIV gag specific immune responses can be induced or not in monkey species. As you can see, uh, we tested four monkeys and three of them actually induced, uh, induced rather uh, good uh, T cell immunity, uh, same as what we did in the previous uh, monkey experiment. And uh, currently, we're actually doing the GMP manufacture of this vaccine. We gave a name called the ICVAX, and hopefully we can bring this vaccine for the uh, patient clinical immunotherapy in the near future. So in addition to the PD-1 based vaccine on the left side, I already introduced it to you. And recently we also invented bispecific neutralization antibodies, which we also demonstrated in humanized mice for better HIV, real HIV uh, uh, infection control. Uh, therefore for this, based on this new discovery, we also designed an arm of the PD-1 based combination immunotherapy for future clinical trials. So hopefully in the future, I can share the data with you about this combination immunotherapy as well. So at the end, I really want to thank my team 
at the University of Hong Kong, many students and postdocs contributed to this study, and also my collaborators uh, who helped uh, me a lot during the process of the study. And this is my talk, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>